Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please check out some of my other videos. I try to focus on rebuilding things for cheap and learning as I go. In this video, I want to show you how I restored a badass twin tunnel sleek craft aristocrat. Um, but in order to tell you this story properly, I think I need to start with my first boat. While I was still in college, I picked up this project boat for $100. Uh, it included the trailer and the outboard. It's a 1950s El Rey runabout with a Johnson Seahorse outboard. This thing was about as basic as you can get, but restoring this one taught me some of the basics and gave me the confidence I needed to tackle something larger. This boat was pretty terrible. Uh, it was really slow. It didn't ride very well, um, but most importantly, it was just super, super unreliable. I'm pretty sure I got towed home more often than I returned under its own power, and it was just really frustrating. I know the joke about boats are just holes in the water you throw money into, and that's true, but this is why when you buy a boat you should buy something that you actually love so it doesn't matter if it costs money because it's awesome. So in 2010, after securing my first full-time job, I started looking for a replacement. I wanted something fast and cool, so I started posting ads on Craigslist with the title Wanted, Cool Boat, 70s, 80s, Speed, Ski Boat, Anything, Projects, Something Cool. Got a lot of replies to some cool stuff, but one guy told me he had a 400 horsepower twin tunnel haul project boat. So that piqued my interest and I went to look at it and this is what I saw. It was red and white, but the garage wasn't really big enough to get a clear view of what I was looking at. The interior was ripped out of it, the floor was rotten, the engine was there, but it wasn't running very well and there was a lot of water leaking from all the different gaskets on those uh, exhaust manifolds. It was a twin tunnel hull though, so that's pretty awesome. But the other thing that really sucked about it was just the overall condition of the thing. Where the cap was bonded to the hull, it was cracked pretty much everywhere around the perimeter of the boat. The thing that was really worrying was on the transom, there's a huge crack running across the entire transom. I wasn't sure how I was going to fix that yet, but the price was right and it looked really cool. So I made an offer for around $1,000 and brought it home. And the first thing I did before I even started working on it was Photoshop it just to see what it might look like when it was done and get stoked about it. So here's a quick Photoshop. So I had thrown it on the side of my mom's house. Thank you, mom. But this was the first time I really got to see the thing from a bit farther away and the lines looked just awesome. I was really, really happy with the way this thing looked. It was good from far, but far from good. So the first thing I decided to tackle was the interior. Inside the boat, I pulled both the gas tanks and just buzzed them off with a wire wheel just to help them look a little better. The seats were so rotten that there was stuff like literally growing on the vinyl. What I wound up doing was soaking the seats in Tylex. All of the rotten wood was replaced with fresh plywood with a few coats of resin just to help seal it from moisture. And then you just simply staple the old foam and vinyl over the top of it. So here are the seat cushions, which look great. Here was the back seat. Again, you can see the whole base is completely rotten. Pop off all the staples, tear out all the rotten wood, and you just use a jigsaw and some new resin to make a new seat base. The next thing up was the floor. So this was probably the worst part of the boat. One of the previous owners decided that they really wanted a cooler right next to the driver's seat. So they cut through the floor and they cut through the main stringer of the boat, which is like the backbone or the spine of the boat. It's what gives the hull its strength. They cut right through all that stuff, and they did not even glass the raw wood. They just left it open. So any of that moisture that got into the boat completely soaked through the floor and into the stringer and just rotted everything out. In this photo, you can see that I just took a screwdriver and just pushing in it just barely, it just went right into the wood. That's how soft and rotten it was. Here's a quick cross section of this boat. Uh, the construction is a lot more simple than most other boats because there's only one stringer and just a piece of plywood for the floor and that's it. So pretty easy to restore these things. So what you need to do is get out a circular saw or an angle grinder and just cut that top layer of fiberglass away, peel that back and wow, look at that. The floor is completely rotten. This is why whenever you're shopping for a used boat, if the floor is soft or spongy, this is what's underneath it. So it's a dirty job. You just have to start prying away all the rotten wood. It's, it's gross. So the best thing to do is to have friends to help you do this because it makes the job a bit easier. Here you can see the floor has been completely removed. 
And then what I did is I took a piece of cardboard and made a template to try to match the contour of the hull and then transferred that over to the replacement stringer. Once I had adjusted that stringer to fit the bottom of the hull, I then used a belt sander to just scuff up the top of the tunnels to make sure that the resin would get a really good bite. And then I started glassing in this main stringer. You can see here I have about two coats of fiberglass and resin securing this thing to the hull. I also used some microbeads and mixed that in with some of the resin just to provide a rounded edge near the bottom. Um, what that's going to do is help your fiberglass flow onto the floor a little better so there isn't a pocket of air. After that was finished, uh, I just did a couple coats of epoxy primer on, on the center of the hull there and then started working on the floor. So this was again just using a regular sheet of plywood, not marine plywood, because I think that the resin soaks into it and you get a lot better bond. Unlike the factory hull, I decided to add some access holes to this floor which would allow me to get down into that main stringer area to remove moisture help the hull breathe and dry out you can throw your cans down there uh, whatever you want to do then what you're going to want to do is put a ton of resin down on the tops of the tunnels and then place that floor that you had prepped onto the boat and put a ton of weight onto it and just leave it alone once you have that floor bonded to the hull pretty securely, you want to put another layer of fiberglass and resin over the top of it just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Because this was a budget build and I didn't have much money, instead of buying new carpet, what I did is I found a local carpet store. And behind the store, they had a bunch of old, slightly used carpet that was pulled out of buildings when they were doing installs with fresh stuff. So I found a section of carpet that looked pretty much new and cost zero dollars. And I glued that in there with some carpet glue that I picked up at Menards. Once that was done, I just threw the refurbished seats in there just to see what it would look like. This kind of helped get me stoked for finishing the rest of the project. So the transom itself was actually fine. The only reason there was a huge crack on the back of the boat was the ski hook was unsupported. So when you were towing anyone with that, it was flexing the upper part of that cap. So what I did is I V'd it out with an angle grinder. And you can see that I just tried to get that as wide as I could. And then I taped it up and started layering fiberglass and resin and I tried to tape that and just push it in there with like duct tape and a pencil anything I could do once I had about six layers of that then I used a flappy disc on an angle grinder and flattened that out to be roughly the right shape then I just started coating it with gel coat let that cure and then it was just sanding and polishing and a little more gel coat eventually there is no crack whatsoever so that's how I took care of that as for the rest of the cracks around the boat, all you do is take a V-shaped can opener, V them out, throw in some gel coat, let that cure, and polish it smooth. So those are pretty easy to fix. While all this was happening, the parts were starting to roll in. Uh, th the nice thing about a Mercruiser is that it's just a Chevy 350, so all the parts are really cheap and really available. Here's the engine. You can see that it looks pretty ratty. Uh, again, the guy told me it was rebuilt, but I didn't believe him. The funny thing was, though, is when I took the intake manifold off, there was still white lithium assembly lube on everything, so inside the engine was actually all brand new. Here's another shot of before the restoration. I just stripped everything off of it. After degreasing it and scrubbing it, I painted it bright white. Uh, you can see I did one light coat here, followed by a heavier coat here. Let this cure completely, and then I hit it with another couple coats of bright red to match the exterior of the boat. 350s are pretty easy to work on, so nothing really surprising there. With the engine starting to take shape, I then bought some Rust-Oleum in a can, uh, hammered metallic gray paint, and painted the bilge area as well as the stringer area. This paint's really nice, it goes on nice and thick and hides all the imperfections. It's oil resistant, it's scuff resistant, it still looks great and it's 10 years old now. All the accessories I just threw on a table and spray bond them with some satin black. And here you can see I have bolted up the water pump, the new timing chain cover, intake, carb, a couple other things on here. Going back to the interior, I bought a new set of gauges to replace the old ones. They are just generic hot rod gauges. You can use whatever you want on these things. Here they are installed. Um, going back to the outside, I used a polisher and some heavy cutting compound to bring the shine back to the boat. Here you can see that I removed the windshield, the steering, all that stuff to try to make polishing this thing out easier. 
Now this thing was honestly getting kind of close to be put in the water, so it was time to attack the stern drive. I replaced the gimbal bearing, just rented a slide hammer and a pulley adapter from AutoZone. After changing the gimbal bearing, I borrowed an engine alignment pin and reinstalled the stern drive. I also found a crazy deal on headers for this boat. These are over transom headers by Stellings Marine and they're fully jacketed, which means it's a tube inside of a tube. It's really crazy, really high end. They were such a good deal, I bought them without even measuring anything in hopes that they would fit. So when I got them home, I just did a quick test fit to make sure that they would clear the transom and they look perfect. So these things make this boat. And then I started assembling everything. So the windshield went back on, the steering went back together with a new steering cable, and it started to look like a boat again. I did keep the seats out of it for a little while because I started in on the wiring, type in like hot rod wiring diagram or go to the ham hokey ass message board and try to get some generic wiring diagrams for a hot rod. I had a couple friends over to try to test fire this thing and see if it would run. So here we are setting the timing, adjusting the valves, and I have a quick little video here showing how that went. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the test fire went pretty well. I think the boat was pretty much ready to go after that. The engine turned out badass looking. Um, other than that, I just needed to throw the interior back into it and double check a couple other pieces of my work. But she was pretty much ready for the water. So here's a photo when I first launched this thing. I hadn't even driven it yet. Uh, did the whole glass bottle on the hull for good luck. And I did have pretty good luck. Other than breaking down a couple times, but you know what, you bring the tools with you and every time you fix it, you make it a little more reliable. At this point in time, this thing's pretty reliable. I, I don't really have to worry about it too much, and if anything does go wrong, I generally know how to fix it. So I've owned this boat for over 10 years now, and man, the amount of memories and just awesome times I've had in this thing are too many to count. I've had people from all over the country come and visit. I've had people who've never driven a boat before drive this thing. I mean... Everyone has a good time. It's awesome. I, I just, what I really don't understand is why so many people buy boring boats. I mean, just buy something awesome and then it doesn't matter if it costs you anything because it's awesome. That's about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something and stay tuned for updates on the SST project as well as another boat that I just picked up because something is wrong with me. But uh, I'm just going to leave you with a couple more images and videos of this thing and hope you enjoy. All right. Cheers.